Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rising Stories Podcast. I'm Kareen Sandifer, your host, and I have been gone for a while, but I am back, and I wanted to check in with you and do a little quick bonus episode today to just kind of get you going on what's going on with Rising Stories and what will be coming at up next for season four. I'm really excited to have some great guests ahead. I've been interviewing and searching for some great guests for the podcast. But today I just wanted to share a few tips with you about being productive and productivity tips that I've been sharing on Instagram every Sunday night and would love for you to join me. I'm at Kareen Sandifer on Instagram. I'm also on Twitter at Kareen Sandifer, and you can also find me on LinkedIn. So that being said, I want to talk to you about these five things that before going to bed on, on a Sunday night or any night, really, you can stay productive all week long. You know, we talk about successful people and what they do in the first few hours of their day, but I feel like it's the, the things that you do before uh, you go to bed make so much sense. Like I know that a few months ago, I realized that if I set out my clothes for working out, like my workout clothes the night before, that I was more apt to going and doing my workout because that was one step I didn't have to do in the morning. So things that you can do the night before are so helpful. When I had um, little kids, I remember that if I knew we were going to the library the day the next day, I would gather up all the library books, or if we were going on a picnic, I would get as much of the picnic done beforehand, put it out on the island, and make sure that all the steps that I needed to take and would take in the morning were done in in the evening beforehand, so that the things that I had to do as we we're walking out the door were shorter. So... Um, That being said, I want to share a few more things. Oh, and I also wanted to share this with you is that a lot of times I would pack my car with the things that I needed to take the next day. And of course, I don't have kids, little kids anymore. But what I do now is if I am returning something for Amazon or if I am taking a load of things to Goodwill, or if I am taking some uh, recycle, I will do those and pack my car up the night before. So I just kind of pack it up so that it's already in there. And I suggest this for anybody who's cleaning out or, you know, taking books to the library that you want to donate, whatever it is, do it the night before. It's already there. Make sure that you make a list though, Uh, add it to your list for the next day so that you can, um, you know, not forget because I have forgotten. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I have my recycle in the back trunk. So I need to do that. So make sure that you do as much as you can the night before. So helpful. And it just saves a lot of time, makes you more productive the next day. So I am going to share some more of a deep, some deep thoughts and deep things to do that will make you more productive during the week. So here we go. Tip number one is become aware of last week's achievements. You know, noting your achievements helps you find a sense of pride and confidence in yourself and in your abilities. This is going to bring you peace and assurance for the week ahead. When we are all tired, all we can see is the mountain ahead of us. But if we can remind ourselves how awesome and powerful we were in past situations, it's all the proof that we need that we can get through this and we'll triumph again. So make make a list or just kind of think about the things, you know, take five minutes and just go, you know, I did X, Y, Z last week or even last month and I was strong and confident and I did my work well, whatever it is, make a note of that. Number two is release your worries. No amount of worrying is going to change anything today or any day. But going to bed with a load of worry will keep your mind ticking and prevent you from getting a restful night's sleep. So instead of worrying, write them all down in what I call a brain dump. So every night before I go to bed, I have a notepad beside me and I just write down all the things that need to get done tomorrow. It's usually the things that are 
present in your mind when you your bet your head hits the pillow for a night's sleep that are pressing and that you need to just kind of write them down to release them. So by releasing them onto a sheet of paper and writing them down, making yourself aware of the things that you need to do for the next day makes all the difference in the world. And then you can attack those tasks in the morning with a clear action plan instead of just having them weigh you down the night before. And, you know, if I don't do that, I find myself just kind of wide awake and my brain is just going and worrying and thinking about all the things I need to do. The next thing is to express gratitude. Now, this is different from listing your achievements. Gratitude, you know, is is different. So don't make this one a tough one, but just jot down three things that you're thankful for. It could be in work, in home life, in personal life. Appreciating your life helps you realize how much you already have and what is right in your world. This is different than listing your achievements. Like I said, this is gratitude for what you have that most likely won't change anytime soon. So it isn't things that you've done like that are accomplishments as much as things that you've been blessed with, things that, um, you know, aren't going to change, like having a great team at work, um, having a comfortable home, having a warm home, or an understanding partner. You know, nothing is too small or too big to list here. So gratefulness, add something that you're grateful for. It helps us to go into the week with a greater appreciation for our life and giving us a better outlook. It's all good, and I want you to think about those things before you retire for the night. Also, number four is make it count. Relax and find something to do that's relaxing, that's enjoyable. Um, You know, these are for Sunday, but they can be for any day. But if you've got the weekend, make sure that you've done something that you can look back. You might even list it. Like sometimes I forget what I do over the weekend and what's happened. So a lot of times on Sunday night before I I go into the next week, I think about what a great time I had. You know, like this morning, I talked about how much football I watched and how great the games were. And it just made me realize that I did have a good weekend. I had a restful weekend. I stayed on the couch. You know, I watched a couple movies and just was had a lazy day. And I just enjoyed football. So that was something that you know, I, because I said that and I, you know, made it, made myself aware, it really did relax me. And I felt like I made the weekend count and I didn't have any regrets. I hope that makes sense. So find your way to relax, do something worthy of the day. Maybe it's, um, you know, taking a long hot bath or a nap or, um, something that will, that cleared your mind, whatever it is, make it count and relax. The last thing on my list is self-care. Care Care about your self-care. Care care about yourself. Give your body and your mind and soul time to unwind. Give it a rest from digesting, you know, maybe stopping eating like two hours before bedtime. Sometimes that really does help to kind of just um, let your body relax in all areas. So, you know, resting from eating before two hours before you go to bed is something that is recommended. You know, I'm not a doctor, so check with your um, doctor and your trainer or whatever, but that has worked for me to not feel full before I go to bed. That really just kind of, you know, makes me feel good. Also, um, you know, getting your body temperature ready for a restful sleep, maybe with a hot bath or a hot shower or a face mask. Something that will relax your body so that you can get the optimal rest. And feed your soul with like good news words, things that you can meditate on or calming music to lull you to sleep. A lot of times I may read a book or I may read some devotion. Uh, Because I'm a Christian, I have these devotions that are Bible verses and things that share good things. So I like to read those before I go to bed. And of course, the end result here is waking up fully rested and not feeling, you know, um, full with food from the night before or not feeling like, um, you know, you've got 
uh, things that you that that are pressing, just kind of giving you a real restful and peaceful kind of lull into sleep. So I hope that these have been helpful. Doing these things will help you stay focused on Monday. And it's a rinse and repeat these steps uh, throughout the week to keep your, you know, your mojo going all week long. So just keep doing some of these as you go along each day. Maybe you'll pick one or two. Like I like to do my brain dump every single night. That really does help me. And I also like to just... Uh, care about my self-care and just do something relaxing the night before Um, and of course you know always always think about your achievements throughout the week or at the end of the week it's just helpful to know where you've been in order to move forward with um, confidence and success you know under your belt and ahead of you so I hope that these have helped. I'm gonna try to do some more as the time goes on. We will be having more interviews coming up soon. I just have to get going with them and they are, they've been, my guests have been interviewed. They are powerful women and I can't wait for you to hear the next episode of Rising Stories podcast. Thanks so much for listening and keep rising in your story.